We are asked in this example to find a point estimate, a z-score, the margin of error, and calculate a confidence interval. I've already gone ahead and completed this problem and this video is just meant to kind of go over the big picture idea of what is going to be asked of us and a, provide a nice step procedure of how to go about solving these problems. So we were told a sample of 1,350 drivers, 823 claimed to regularly beep their horn to annoy drivers. First thing we need to know is what is a, a point estimate and how do we calculate it? What's the best point, point estimate for the proportion of drivers who beep their horn? So this is just a sample and what we want to know is what would be the best estimate for the entire population? If I wanted to say what proportion of the entire population does this, what would we say? What would we estimate? Well, given that our sample was 1350, we're going to use that to calculate a point estimate. So this p hat is telling us, well, 823 drivers claim to beep their horn regularly to annoy other drivers. Out of the 1350, when we calculate that to a decimal form, it's approximately 0.61. So we would say this is the best estimate for the population, even though it's just the sample. Over here we have q hat. So p hat is the proportion, popu the estimator for the proportion. Q hat is going to be the complement of that. So when we subtract it p hat from 1, we get 0.39. The reason I'm calculating this is that we're going to need it soon. These are the point estimates. What we need to do is to create a range. That's not good enough. Knowing that it's approximately 0.61, what about if it's 0.75? Is that too much? So what we can do is create a confidence interval. We want to create a 95% confidence interval. So the first thing we need to do is to find the z-score associated with that. In other words, I need to know how many standard deviations or standard errors am I going to add to this point estimate. I want to have a little bit to the positive direction, subtract a few standard deviations in the negative direction so I have a range. So if I want a 95% confidence interval, that means my level of significance, alpha, my level of significance is 0.05. This is going to be the area outside of that 95%. That means what we're looking for is if we split that 5% in half, we're going to have 2.5% or 0 0.025 outside on each tail. So you can think about this as our proportion, our estimate, our estimators in the middle here, we want to add a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Now we know that our estimate here is not necessarily going to be in the center. This is just helping us kind of get an idea of how many z-scores we want to add and subtract. So we need to find the z-score where we have 0.025 in the right tail and 0.05 in the left tail, in both tails. This can be found by looking up your z-score chart, using your z-score chart, and flipping back to the critical value page if necessary. And we found that the z-score associated with a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. This would be a good one to memorize. The z-score associated with a 95% confidence interval, 1.96. So we need to add and subtract 1.96 standard deviations from both sides of that point estimate. Now, the margin of error, this is going to be the total value that we add and subtract to that point estimate. And the margin of error formula for a proportion is calculated this way. It is the number of standard deviations that we're going to do. So 1.96, we just found that, that critical value. This is going to depend on the confidence level. And then over here, this is what's called, this is how we calculate the standard error. This is the standard error for a proportion, sampling distribution for a proportion. So this is p hat times q hat divided by n, take the square root of that. This is the size of the standard deviation for the sampling distribution. So we get 1.96 for our z-score. We're adding and subtracting 1.96 standard errors. So we're going to, in that sampling distribution, kind of give, us, so give ourselves a little bit of room on the, in that sampling distribution. We calculate this to get 0.03. This is what we're going to add and subtract. The margin of error is 0.03. To create the confidence interval, we need to start with the point estimate, add the margin of error, then the point estimate, and subtract the margin of error. So I take my point estimate of 0.61 and I add my margin of error, 0.03, to get 0.64. Here I'm going to do the 0.61 minus 0.03 to get 0.58. So 
One way that we can write this is to write our population proportion. This is what we're estimating. And we can write it as an inequality. 0.58 is less than our population proportion, which is less than 0.64. This is just an estimate of what, we're what we think, right, using the knowledge from our sample. So how would we interpret this? This is a very important part. The best way to, to explain this interval would be to say, we have 95% confidence that the true population proportion is contained or is in between 0.58 and 0.64. Notice I didn't say there's a 95% chance that it's in there, or there's a probability of 0.95 that it's between these two numbers. The reason why it's not 0.95 or a 95% chance for one individual confidence interval. To use that 95%, we would have to do this thousands of times, and what we would see is that as we continually do confidence intervals, 95% of them would contain the actual population, would be true in that they're containing the population parameter, in this case, proportion. So instead, to kind of get around this, we don't want to say there's a 95% chance. We'll just say we have 95% confidence, which means if we were to repeat this over and over and over and over again, we would expect 95% to have the population mean. I hope that makes sense. Let's now get into calculating these confidence intervals by ourselves.